Hi, I'm James Matier with Gulf Coast Ultrasound. And my hot tip for today is how to shorten the learning curve for ultrasound needle guidance when using the in-plane needle approach. A few tips. Most clinicians uh, start with the out-of-plane approach, which is fine and is an approach you will continue to want to use. The in-plane approach, however, is more precise and may be preferred for smaller vessels, nerve blocks, and injection techniques. Uh, some of the challenges with needle guidance include that it is a fine motor skill. The probe is usually held with a non-dominant hand, making it initially a little more challenging. So the learning curve may take longer than anticipated. So it does require practice with gel or tissue phantoms. You could compare this to developing your expertise at fine suturing. It's not something that you learn in one day or one week. It takes time to develop this skill, but it's well worth the effort. We will be using the in-plane or longitudinal view of the needle for uh, approach to the target vessel. Again, this is a free hand method. The most important point uh, on visualizing the target structure is you want to make sure that you're in the midline, especially if it's a vascular structure. And you can do that by slight side-to-side -side movement. Uh, if you are oblique, you'll see how it tapers off on each end. So then you want to twist the probe or rotate until you are in longitudinal and have a good parallel view as well. The heel-to-toe motion will line up the vessel perpendicular to the surface. Once you have a good view of your target structure, you want to keep your probe hand motionless. So that means you need to have good stabilization of your arm, hand, and probe because from now um, until you've entered the target, you do not want to move the probe at all. So we're going to advance our needle at the very edge of the probe and at about a 45 degree angle, okay, we'll see the needle coming in from the side. Now we're at about a 45 degree angle on this one. As we advance, I move the needle tip side to side and you can see it appearing into the thin imaging sector of the probe and you can see it disappear. So we want to have it in the middle of the imaging sector before we advance again. I advance again. Okay, I'm moving it side to side. Okay, I see the brightest point of the tip of the needle at that point. Now I will advance again into the target structure. So I'm in the center of that target structure. I'm going to withdraw the needle now and advance it at a shallower angle so you can get a better idea of how this side-to-side -side fanning motion affects the direction within the imaging plane. So we're at about a 15 degree angle this time. As I do the side-to-side -side motion now, I can see the tip of the needle at its brightest point here. So I advance when it's bright, okay? If it stays bright, you can keep advancing, but this side-to-side -side motion helps you make sure that you're in the center of that imaging plane. Now I'm very bright and I'll advance, okay? You notice I've not moved my probe hand at all. I have that stabilized, I've been able to maintain the view of the target image the whole time. So I'm in the center of the target image. So this was all the in-plane or longitudinal approaches to a target structure using the freehand technique and showing the importance of stabilizing that probe and using a slight side-to-side -side motion to stay within the imaging plane as you advance. That's my hot tip for today. Now you give it a try.